Let's look at solving mole balances for the tubular reactor. So in an ideal tubular reactor, we've considered a system with plug flow. So we have a flat velocity profile with no radial variations in uh, compositions and temperatures and typically operated at st steady state. So the compositions in our system don't vary with time, but they do vary with position along the length of the reactor. So the mole balance for our ideal plug flow reactor looked something like this. That the derivative of the molar flow rate of some species A with respect to volume is equal to the rate of formation of that species. Okay, so let's solve this to get a concentration profile uh, for a simple situation. So let's look at the case of a first order irreversible reaction. So a reaction A going to B with a rate expression for the rate of consumption of A equal to a forward rate constant times the concentration of A. Okay, so we can plug this um, rate expression into our mole balance. And we can um, express the molar flow rate of A as the product of the uh, volumetric flow rate times the concentration of A. So uh, in this case, we'll assume that our system operates at constant density. And so the volumetric flow rate is constant throughout the reactor. So we can uh, express this volumetric flow rate as just the inlet volumetric flow rate uh, V0. Okay, so in that case, our mole balance can be rewritten as V0, the inlet volumetric flow rate, times the change in concentration uh, with respect to volume of A. And so again, that's equal to our rate expression for the uh, rate of formation of A. Okay, so now we have a um, equation that we can uh, separate and integrate. So we will, um, our initial condition here for integration is going to be that at the reactor inlet, uh, so at a volume of zero, we have a uh, initial concentration of A, C, A naught. So our expression, we're gonna integrate our left-hand side from C, A naught to C, A, D, C, A over C, A. And then on our right-hand side, we have just some constants we can pull out of the integral. So the uh, reaction rate constant K divided by the inlet volumetric flow rate times the integral of dV from zero to V. So we can solve explicitly for the concentration of A to get the concentration profile along the length of the reactor. So the concentration of A at any point is equal to the initial concentration times this exponential function, which depends on the reaction rate constant, the position along the reactor or the reactor volume, if we're looking at the outlet concentration, divided by the volumetric flow rate uh, to the inlet of the reactor. So we can define a term here, tau, as the uh, volume of the reactor divided by the inlet volumetric flow rate. So if we look at the units here, we can see that we have, of course, volume divided by the volumetric flow rate. So that's dividing by volume per time. And so this has units of time. So what is the physical interpretation of this? So we call this the residence time, and it's the uh, time an average molecule spends within the reactor. Okay, so defining this term, now we can write that the concentration of A is equal to the initial concentration times the uh, exponential function of the reaction rate constant times tau, the resonance time. Okay, and so you might recognize this concentration profile as uh, identical to that of the batch stirred tank reactor with uh, tau now taking the place of the reaction time T. And so in general, this is uh, the case that the plug flow reactor equations are gonna be mathematically identical to those of the batch stirred tank reactor with tau replacing the reaction time T. 
So if, for example, we wanted to solve for the concentration profile for a reversible reaction, so let's say we have a reaction A going reversibly to B with elementary kinetics, we wouldn't have to resolve this problem since we've already done it for the batch stirred tank reactor. Instead, we could just uh, directly write the concentration profile uh, with one modification where we're replacing the reaction time, T, with the residence time, tau. So it would look something like this. So if we consider physically um, why this is the case, so we can look at this sort of from the perspective of a fluid element, it should make some sense. So if we have plug flow, let's just draw a two-dimensional representation of our reaction. So we have some fluid element moving along it. So if uh, this uh, fluid element is small enough, so if it's a differential element, should be well mixed, and so we have a uh, constant reaction rate within it. And so changes in composition occur going down the len length of this reactor as this fluid element moves along. So if we uh, want to, we can look at a sort of moving coordinate system uh, centered around this fluid element. So if we did that, what it would uh, essentially have is a concentration uh, of species that uh, doesn't depend on position, but instead changes with time as this fluid element is moving. And so this is exactly the situation that we have uh, in the batch reactor. So this is why we can uh, sort of make this analogy between the PFR and the batch stirred tank reactor, uh, converting the reaction time for the resonance time that fluid elements spend in the reactor.